start off our painting process the first thing we're going to do is give this a base coat of black and this is a exterior latex uh, house paint always start off paint the inside of your pumpkin first that way you don't have to worry about bleed out on the outside get that inside completely painted <clears throat> and then move on to the outside now you could use a sprayer or something else to make it easier on the inside to paint the inside with However, I'm working indoors in the house and it's just easier for me. It's not more, it's not faster, but it's easier for me just to use a brush. So that's what I do for purposes of making this video. But if you've got a spray gun and you can spray some exterior paint in there, do that. And we use the exterior paint as well to give us a layer of protection from the weather. All right, so a couple things before we get started here uh, that I did besides doing the black base coat I went ahead and I dry brushed uh, the outside of the pumpkin with white um, in really in this way that we're going to paint this pumpkin because um, this is a different type of uh, painting that we're going to do if you've seen one of my original uh, pumpkin tutorials where we did the dry brush and then everything was just kind of a watered down so you could see through it um, this this painting is a little bit different uh, different than that because basically what we're really going to do is paint the highlights onto the pumpkin. So technically you really didn't have to do the white dry brush on the outside. I'm just a creature of habit and it's something I've gotten a habit of doing and I just did it automatically. Anyway, uh, for people that are out there that have taken art classes or painting classes and things like that, this is probably nothing new to them. However, for me, uh, never took an art class, haven't took any painting classes, so this technique was new to me, and I started playing around with it. I really enjoy it, and I like the way um, it comes out, and it really brings the highlights out, and really brings some good color into the lower areas, and just gives it more definition. It takes longer to paint it this way. If you want to do it fast, dry brush it white, and then use some watered down orange color, go over it a couple times, let that white and black bleed through that orange, and it still looks good. It's got good depth. But this way, I feel like it comes out much better. I enjoy the paintwork much better, but it does take more time. If you do it this way and take the time, I think you'll be really happy with your end result. However, so I dry brushed it white, and then on the inside, I went ahead and I had painted all the inside white, so I got rid of that black in there, so I had a good white background. And then I painted the inside of this a... Um, just a bright neon orange. That way when I put a light in this uh, around Halloween time when it's out on display, that that bright neon orange helps the glow so you can see through um, the eyes and the mouth much better. If you left that black, it just sucks up all the light. So that's why we painted that a bright, bright green on the inside. Anyway, what we're gonna do, uh, this paint job on this is really gonna consist of an orange, brown, white and yellow and these are really the only colors we're going to use to paint this and bring the highlights out. Um, I may use a little green later on in the stem and if I do you guys will see it. You won't miss out. But this is just a pumpkin orange and this is just a burnt umber. I'm almost out of it. And this is a standard just yellow and a standard white and these are just cheap acrylic paints you can get at any store like Michaels or Hobby Lobby or even Walmart for that matter. But what I'm going to start out with, what you're going to see, this right here is a mixture, and I, I can't tell you how much orange to, to brown, but this is a mixture of this orange and this brown and water. So this is watered down, and this is what we're going to use for the first coloring coat on the pumpkin itself. Um, you may be able to see this. But this makes a just a dirtier orange color, and it's almost brown in a way. I like to start off um, painting this way with a with a darker color, a darker orange. But I want to keep it dark at first, and then we'll bring the highlights out. And the thing about it that I've learned is what we'll do. And I'm going to do a first coat with this 
watered down orange, let it dry, and I'm going to cover the whole thing. Then I'm going to come back again with this and do another coat, but in some of these ridges that are in here and closer in here, I'm not going to paint those a second time. You know, let's say we're going to do 100% coverage at first, and then I'm going to come back and do another coverage with this about 90% where I'm leaving some of these grooves where I'm not hitting it again, but I'm bringing more color back on these outside edges, and that helps lighten this up. And what it, what it does is it creates a smooth blend from light to dark in your paint job. Then after we do that a few times, what we'll do is wind up, I'll probably add some more orange, I'll put this out on here and add some more orange paint to it to make it a little bit brighter, do some coats with that, then I'll wind up using some white to all this and bring in the brighter and eventually it'll just be basically this and this white paint and then we'll mix in with some yellow and then eventually for the last coat the last top thing we're going to do is going to be the yellow but basically in this to create a smooth blend as long as you're keeping one of the core colors you can add another color to lighten it up so if you're starting with brown and you went brown and orange and you want to lighten it up some more from that you add more orange if you want to lighten up some more you can add the white and then you're going with just the white and the orange and then if you want to change the colors some more you can insert a yellow or another color but i've still got this base color i transitioned through and even if i wanted to go crazy and go from this orange to yellow and something else since i started using this yellow and now this yellow becomes the primary color with what's going on you can add another color to it at least that's how I was shown and what I was taught and I really enjoy and it works out well and it creates a nice smooth blend from your highlights down into your low lights. So versus just, you know, dry brushing this on and putting a little bit of watered down paint on it and then come back in and dry brushing over hit the, to hit the highlights make them pop, we're actually going to paint the highlights in. A little bit different, takes longer, but it's worth it in the end. The first thing I'm doing here is using a small paintbrush with that watered down brown and orange and just outlining around the stem. I try not to get that orange color on the uh, stem as you're painting because it can bleed through on your brown. And once we get this all uh, trimmed out, then just stepped up to a bigger brush and completely painted the entire pumpkin with this watered down orange and brown color. So our pumpkin's been completely covered one layer with the uh, first amount of paint. Uh, now we're on to the second layer here. And on this second layer, like I said before, you're not gonna do a complete coverage. You're just gonna come in on these raised areas, completely get them, and then blend down into those valleys a little bit, leaving some of the gaps in the valleys unpainted. That way they're a little darker than the rest of it. So really concentrate on all your raised areas get those covered real well and then bring your blend down into these smaller gaps but don't paint the entire thing in your in your valleys during this tutorial the main thing you're gonna see me painting is the face of the pumpkin but I just want to note that you're going to paint in this same fashion your higher areas all the way around your pumpkin so everywhere around your pumpkin where you've got a higher area you're going to add more of your color to and then fade off into those valleys. So be sure you go all the way around your pumpkin and paint all your raised areas because we want to bring attention and detail <clears throat> to all these raised areas that we created when we put all the clay on and just really give some depth and definition to this pumpkin all the way around. Now we're moving on with our third coat. Uh, this time we're going to use a little bit less of that uh, watered down orange and brown and we're going to add quite a bit more orange to this and we're going to add a little more water to it as well. We're going to add more orange to it so it lightens it up and really starts bringing out the highlights. Again, you're really going to focus more on your raised areas. You're going to come down into the valleys a little bit less than you did before and we're just going to continue this process over and over again. Another thing that I like to note that I don't think I said before, in between these coats, it's good if you wait 5-10 minutes in between the coats. That way the 
paint dries up a little bit more and you're not just muddying down and watering down all this paint and blending it together. So give this some dry time in between your coats. Five to ten minutes is plenty of time and then move on to your next coat. Moving on to coat number four. I know this seems like a tedious process, but the end result is great. We're gonna add more orange to this than we had before, so we're brightening it up even more than we had before. And we're gonna, once again, focus on all of our raised areas and go less and less into the valleys with every single step. It's gonna be the same process over and over again until we get to our final coat. So I know it's long, I know it's tedious, I know it's monotonous because you're going over the same things uh, over and over again, but if you stay with it, this really comes out great. All right, so, so far, um, all we've really been painting with is this watered down mixture of the brown and, and orange. And then we wound up adding some more orange to it to start lightening it up. Uh, on this next layer, we're gonna add some, we're just gonna go with the straight orange, and this is a pumpkin orange, and we're gonna add white to it to lighten that up some more, so it's really gonna start bringing out these highlights. A thing I really, want to point out here on this the very first layer you know we covered everything and then we came back here with the second layer and I worked down uh, into these grooves quite a bit you know really didn't leave much that wasn't painted or untouched or like you can see in here I mean we're starting to pull some definition you can see but now uh, and as we added each layer you're just painting more and more on your ridges and you're highlighting your ridges. Now, since we're gonna add this white and go an even lighter color, the focus is really gonna be, as we paint, the focus is really gonna be, you know, on these ridges. So when we come with this, this new real light orange, you know, we're not even gonna pull this light color down into here. We're gonna stay up on the top sides of this and the lighter we go, and as we do more colors, the areas that we're painting are going to become narrower and narrower until it's just a fine little pieces that we're going to hit and just highlight little bitty areas. And that brings this kind of this uniform highlight and really makes these pop. It'll make all these crevices in here seem like they're quite a bit darker. But when you're looking at it, it looks like it has an even flow. And it looks like, you know, it's all really you know, orange like a pumpkin, but then you're just getting these highlighted areas. So I just wanted to let you guys know as you go further along and you're lightening your paints, you're going to be painting less and less of your raised areas, your highlighted areas, and you're going to start focusing more on just these upper ridges and not coming down in these other little valleys. So we'll get to it. Also, a thing I didn't uh, say earlier um, every one of these I'm watering down just a little bit by watering down watering the paint down it helps blend um, from one layer to the next so you don't have harsh edges it also I may even said it as this is going along but when you have a harsh edge and you can really see the cut between you know this color and that color if you pull the paint from your brush which I'm sure you saw me do you can come back in and stipple right there along that edge and fade that edge and blend that edge from a harsh edge into a softer edge so it blends out better. As you can see, this, this orange is quite a bit lighter than what we've got. So I'll just clean the brush out here and we'll start another round. All right, so here we go again. I don't know if this the fifth, sixth layer, I, you lose count after a while. <clears throat> but like I said right then, 
This time the focus is more on the center of your raised areas. Um, you're staying away from your valleys and just go over every single raised area you got and you're painting a little bit less each time, bringing all these highlights out. Now, on this, I may put a little too much white in it. I mean, it's almost looking pink. I uh, probably really should add some more orange to this, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it and see what it looks like uh, at the end. If I don't like the way it looks, I can always come back, darken it down with a little bit more orange, and hit all these spots again to make that blend a little bit better. But um, I'm just going to go with it. We'll see how it turns out. Now that we're getting into these lighter colors, you can really start seeing the detail pulling out of this pumpkin and really creating some great depth in the paint job. All right, so our next layer here, we're gonna start adding our yellow to the paint. We're gonna lighten it up even more, add a little more water to it and hit it again. Remember, as we go, you're going to hit smaller and smaller sections of each one of these raised areas. Now, finally, we're on our last coat. And this really is basically just straight yellow. I mean, there's a little hint of the orange color in there, but hardly any at all. So really what we're doing right now is we're coming up and just highlighting this with straight yellow paint. And this time when you come across, you're just hitting the top edges of each piece. You just a little bit of yellow to blend it in because this is really going to make the top sides of all of these ridges pop and really come alive. So let's finish this project out by painting up these pumpkin guts. Uh, this is just a bright green paint that I had on hand. There's no water added to this at all. You're just going straight into it with uh, a bright green paint and covering up all the guts that you've got. Get way up in there in the corners and make sure you get complete coverage all the way through. Once I had that painted, I'm not even taking any time to let this dry. I just took a little bit of yellow paint, <clears throat> put it out there, and just basically dry brushing it on top of the green and it's kind of blending in some spots look yellow some spots pull more green there's also some green on my palette too that I'm just kind of mixing in and just really trying to bring these colors together and, and make some different colors between the two different kinds of paint so I lied to you we have one more piece we got to paint and that's the stem we're going to start this off just by painting the entire stem brown using a watered down brown. It's just that straight brown, that burnt umber that I had uh, mixed with some water, got it watered down. And then we're just going to paint the entire stem this color, which is a base color. And then we're going to let that dry, put it from a fan, take 5-10 minutes to get it dry. Make sure it's dry completely before we move to this next step, which we're just going to use a lighter tan color and just do a dry brush over the top of the stem. That way we bring out all the highlights in the stem that we had from um, using the toilet paper and paste to give us that texture. So you're just going to come back across it with uh, a light tan and bring out all those highlights in the stem. So here we go. Our painting process is complete. We brought out all these highlights in the pumpkin. We painted all these highlights in. 
As you can see, it's got a nice even flow and it really creates depth within the paint. I know it takes longer, it's a much more tedious process, but the end result of this paint job is absolutely amazing. It looks so much better than uh, how I used to paint the pumpkins. Again, make sure you go all the way around. As you can see, as you go around, the spots that you're bringing out um, with the yellows, the highlight, they're a little bit bigger because the raised area is bigger. So if your raised area is bigger, your highlights are going to be bigger. If they're smaller, it's going to be smaller. It's that simple. The only thing this pumpkin has left to be done is get a good coat of spar urethane varnish over it and it will be ready for Halloween and any type of weather that Mother Nature is going to throw at it. Come on.